Hi friends, Simit here from InformedTrades.com. Next up in our series on uh, investing in gold mining stocks, we'll cover a little bit of uh, the basics of mining and sort of some, some basic ideas that, uh, that investors in these stocks will want to familiarize themselves with. Uh, key points, economic geology is complex. Uh, everyone says they have a great mine. There's reports called the National Instrument 43101 and JORC. Uh, NI43101 is for uh, Canadian mining stocks, JORC is Australia. Other countries have uh, similar reports. Uh, if you're a mining investor, you definitely want to look at those reports. They give you some key data. Uh, another number to pay attention or issue to pay attention to is cost per ounce, right? So it's you're basically with these companies, it's you know how much does it cost for them to get it out of the ground and then what's the market value they can sell it at. Uh, you want to see a low cost per ounce history of the mine, and then we'll conclude with some, some resources for investors that allow them to really do a lot of data analysis. Okay, it's complicated. Picking explorers is a tough business. Most of the companies that say they have great mines and are sitting on top of a whole bunch of great stuff do not. Companies that are actually in, produce, uh, in production have uh, earnings and dividends. Uh, that's the safer bet. Of course, they don't yield as much, but it is. Uh, I do like to remind people about the risk involved here. Most of the explorers are tough, and most of you who play in this market will fail. Okay, everyone says they have a great mine. Again, you know, all, there are lots of mining companies out there. They all will claim to have uh, you know, a wonderful thing beneath them. Most of them do not. When you're looking at mining companies, you want to look at the uh, NI43101 for, for mining companies that are listed in Canada. Canada definitely is the, the big hot spot for, for mining companies. The NI43101 is sort of a report uh, that public mining companies are required to file. It sort of lists, it has a geologist, a qualified professional, they call it, uh, estimate the mine. You know, it gives you some concrete numbers on how many, act, how many ounces of, of gold, silver, copper, or whatever the, the company is mining is in the mines that they have. Uh, the list a bunch of numbers, you know, there's uh, reserve numbers and resource numbers. I recommend focusing on the reserve numbers. Uh, the resource numbers are not always, you know, if there's a lot of minerals in the ground but it's not able to extract it at a, at a worthwhile cost, then that's sort of not very meaningful. Uh, reserve numbers are more, more conservative in terms of estimates of how much it uh, can be extracted uh, at, at efficient prices, which is definitely, as an investor, you know, it's not just the minerals there, but being able to pull it out at a low cost. Uh, of course, being conservative here really helps. You do want to, you know, if they upshoot and they exceed your conservative estimates, that's great, but being conservative helps you uh, filter out some of the losing potential losers. Uh, another thing to focus on is cost per ounce. So a lot of companies in their investor presentation will list a cost per ounce. This is really important. You know, it's basically the, the opportunity the company has is you know, the market price of the mineral minus the cost per ounce times the amount of ounces that, they're, that they can access. That's sort of the basic formula. Uh, grams per ton is a key indicator of what their cost per ounce is going to be like. Uh, here in this picture you see this is a sample of something that has a 4,100 grams per ton. A lot of the mines now have less than two grams per, per ton, less than one gram per ton. So this really shows an extreme scenario. Um, but that higher grams per ton generally is going to have a lower cost of mining. Uh, so that sort of gives you an idea. Uh, something like this, a four, over 4,000, is very rare. Like I mentioned, most of them are around one gram now. Uh, you know, a lot of people are concerned that a lot of the easy resources have been taken up, so the mining business is getting a little bit harder now. History repeats. Areas that have had promising mines in the past, uh, you know, still do. Part of the issue here is that, you know, the high quality, the best mining opportunities tend to form around fault lines. Uh, so areas that have those, those proper fault lines often just, you know, they've been historically have had great yields and continue to do so. Here on the map now, Nevada in the United States, for instance, in California, of course, there was a gold rush in the 19th century. Lots of mining opportunities in the past there, and they're still sort of there. So the geography is something to consider. You know, the history hasn't historically been an opportunity. It may uh, still be one now. Resources, three websites that sort of help you put all this data together, compare it to the market value of the company, goldminerpulse.com, 24hgold.com, corebox.com, definitely great resources. If you want to focus on the explorers to find the huge opportunities, I recommend spending a lot of time on those websites and doing some serious uh, number crunching there. That's about it. If you have any questions, want to add more, join us over at informedtrades.com. Thanks and best of luck in your trading.